Welcome to this video about multi-hazard modeling with Lysen. Today we're going to look at a couple examples of multi-hazard simulations that you can carry out yourself using Lysen and the software. All these examples are also uploaded on the SourceForce page, so you can get the data and get the run file that contains the settings, so you can run the simulations yourself fairly easily. Let's dive into it. So the first simulation we have here is about the Caribbean island Dominica. And in 2017, there was quite a strong hurricane, Hurricane Maria, that went over this island. So we're going to do a physically based simulation for the impact of this hurricane. Now, I'll take you through some of the settings first. In the main settings tab for the model, we have our start and ending time, our time step, and our time step for flow. Now at the moment, the time step for flow is a little bit too low, so I'm going to change that to be half a second. A general rule of thumb is that it should be at least less than your grid cell size. And here we're working with a grid cell size of 10 meters. So that means we should have a time step of less than 10 meters. Now here we have quite rapid flows because of the steep terrain. So I'm playing it safe, making the time step quite a bit smaller still. Now there's three directories you have to point Lysen towards. The first one contains the time input, in our case, the rainfall file. The second is the map directory, where it will find all the spatial maps containing info about the terrain and the landscape. And the third one is the output directory, where Lysen will store all the output from the simulations. Below this, you'll see a couple processes you can activate. At the moment, we're just doing rainfall and hydrology modeling. Even further down, you can toggle between using the CPU or the GPU for your simulations. For now, we'll stick with the CPU. On the time input, we make sure to select our rainfall file. And then the input maps, we make sure that all the highlighted maps, which are the maps that actually are required by the selected processes, are selected and are correct. Finally, under output, you can change if you want dynamic output, so a new map written every time step, or if you just want the totals. For now, we're fine with output of total values and peak flow heights, etc. So let's go back and let's actually run the simulation and see what happens. And it needs to think a little bit and then quickly we see the model starts running and we start seeing some water heights. Now at the moment these water heights are fairly small and that's because a lot of the water is still infiltrating and we're at the early stages of the event. But soon we'll see more flow develop. Now under the map viewer you can change things like the color gradients, etc. the minimum and maximum values that you want uh, for displaying the flow heights and other properties. If you select a user map, you can use the option below to also inspect other values, such as flow velocity, uh, the wetting front depth from the infiltration model, or maybe the cumulative infiltration. Now we see that some flow is starting to develop some runoff, but let's look at including more processes. So we'll stop the simulation and we'll add slope stability to our simulation. We'll see that some new maps are now highlighted, uh, in particular some soil parameters such as the internal friction angle, cohesion, soil density. Now if I press on this map button, it will actually open and show the values here. So in this case we have an internal friction angle of 0.54 radians. If we want, we can automatically also change these uh, as sort of a calibration tool. So each of these maps is multiplied by this number you see on the right before it's actually loaded. So if we change this to 0 0.9, the real used internal friction angle value would be approximately equal to 0 0.5. Now, let me save this and let us run this again. So the model started to run again. And when we go to user maps, we can now also inspect the factor of safety. Let me provide this with a little bit of a maximum value. And then we see that some of these areas are not so stable and might be prone to slope failure. If we also want to simulate the runout from these, we can also include slope failure process. And the slope failure process will automatically predict the failure volumes and then also start a runout simulation based on the predicted failures. Now, if we don't want those failures to occur at the start of our simulation, we might want to include initial stability 
and with this initial stability option the model will auto calibrate to prevent failures from happening at the start of your simulation. Now all of the files that you need to run this simulation are available in the link below. Now let's look at a second multi-hazard simulation, something completely different. A dam break that occurred in South Korea. Now here we're talking about a shorter simulation because it's not a uh, rainfall driven event but it's a uh, fatal dam, reservoir break and the run out from this into a small catchment with a village there. Now this will just simulate maybe for 0 to 120 seconds and the time step we're going to change also from 0 0.5 seconds for flow. Now again we have set our time input map directory and our output directory and the activated processes at the moment are all empty except for the initial water. Now if we look at the actual input maps we see that we require only very little input as well. Only the elevation model, the Manning surface roughness coefficient, and the initial water height. The initial water height here is what you would find as a water height within the reservoir that's going to be failing. Now let me run this simulation as well. And we should see that because it's quite a small area, we quickly start to see the reservoir water run out into this area. Let me press run. Yes, there we go. So we can see the velocities and the water actually entering into the catchment. Now, if we want to run this on the GPU, this is incredibly easy. We can simply deselect the use CPU option, and now it will run the entire model on the GPU instead. It takes a little bit longer to start because it has to compile the model specific code on your GPU. But using uh, this method, you can actually use your GPU for this kind of modeling. And we see that it's a little bit faster on my laptop to use the GPU compared to the CPU. Now, if you're wondering what GPU is being used, you can go to the options and then to the device. And on the device, you'll see that I have a T600 NVIDIA laptop GPU. I could also use the OpenCL for my integrated graphics, but those won't do me any better. Let's move on to the third example, landslide runout in uh, the Akron area. So if we look at this example, um, we see that the time step flow is again very small and I'm going to keep it like this because this is a very fast moving rock avalanche and we need a small time step to maintain stability. My time input map and output directory are again set. In this case I have initial water and initial solids. If we go to the input maps, we see that we require not only the initial solids, but also some properties of this solid, such as the density, internal friction angle, and the rock size. And this run file comes pre-calibrated. So there is already a calibration factor being applied to the internal friction angle. Well, let us run this model, clean up the map viewer a bit, and we see that our landslide runout starts. We can see the flow velocities, as well as the heights of the material, the fluids and the solid mixture as it moves down and it will eventually deposit. Now if you want more detailed and advanced interactions with the model, you can run the model from the integrated scripting language in Lysum and you can do what that means calibration. And you can also interact with the model by changing values in maps uh, while the simulation is running. But that's a topic for another video. For now, thank you for watching. You can find the datasets for these examples in the description and on the website lifestylemodel.com. Thank you so much and have a good day.